something, Robin. You know, uh, Lauren Debick has been coming in for a while now, and every time she comes in here, we learn something from her and from her guests. And the one thing I've never really quite gotten in my head is the difference between occupational therapy and physical therapy. It's still, I, I, I'm, I'm just telling you, it hasn't sunk in yet. So we're going to learn right now. Uh, Lauren is here. She's the manager and of marketing communications at Ocala Health. And uh, Dr. Jeff Nasman is a doctor of physical therapy for Strive, and he's here with Lauren. And uh, we're going to talk about physical therapy, and I'm not so sure if occupational therapy is part of this or not, but uh, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. How Thanks you, for having us. How are you doing? Excellent, excellent. And we can make OT a part of it. OT? Yeah. That's what you call it for short? OT, occupational therapy, PT. Okay. For what is, can you help me with this? Let me see. Is is it the hands? Is it my job? What is the occupational? <laughs> <laughs> well, occupational therapy is uh, can be hands. They they focus on uh, elbow, wrist, and and hand treatments. A lot of the certified hand therapists in the community are occupational therapists. They can be physical therapists as well. They also, in the hospital setting where I work, um, work very much with uh, helping patients relearn functional activities, such as. Um, uh, after a stroke or some kind of devastating illness, they they can have uh, retraining and how to shower, how to do what we call ADLs, activities of daily living, such as brushing their teeth, uh -huh. eating, co uh, combing their hair. They're more into restore, helping them restore those functional things, whereas the physical therapist is working on mobility, working on their ability to get in and out of a chair, transfer into their bed, and, <coughs> excuse me, um, Walking uh, with the least restri restrictive assistive device. Why, why does that become necessary? Do we just n not use our legs enough? Like should we, we? Like would we prevent needing that if we walked more often? Well, that certainly can help. A lot of times in the hospital, especially like in the trauma unit, it's a result of trauma. So people have oh, to okay. relearn. You okay. know, they might have a traumatic brain injury. Uh, they might have un gone through a cerebral vascular accident, commonly known as a stroke. Um, and so their brain has been damaged and they have to relearn how to do those types of activities. So that's where the occupational therapist and PT or the physical therapist come in. Um, but many times, you know, as we age, obviously um, people get arthritic conditions and keeping active and moving as much as they can can delay the onset of that or help them stay more mobile. So yeah, uh, walking would be helpful with that. But um, there's a lot of reasons why they might be in a facility where um, we have to start retraining them with some of those activities. Is physical therapy always in a facility, or do you have outpatient physical therapy patients? We have uh, physical therapy in, and occupational therapy in, in all types of settings. Okay. Outpatient physical therapy, um, we, in outpatient settings uh, where you would, you know, a lot of people with sports injuries or work injuries or just day-to-day uh, -day activities that they can no longer perform as well as they want to, they can go in and see an outpatient physical therapy therapist. You can also um, have physical therapists sent to your home through home health. A lot of times after a surgery, mm -hmm. when the patient um, is what we call home homebound, the physical and occupational therapist will see them in their home. There are other settings such as a long-term care, a nursing home, or an inpatient acute rehab center, for example, like a Health South here in town would have um, PTOT and speech. So we're in all across the board in, in all settings in the uh, community. Uh, physical therapy can also be helped if you're confined to a wheelchair. Uh, so it depends on the reason. Sometimes there's progressive uh, diseases that, uh, for example, muscular dystrophy. Um, in, in those cases, many times if they're confined to a wheelchair, we're training and working with the family members to help them be able to transfer uh, their, their loved ones in and out of bed safely and help mm -hmm. protect them so they don't, you know, hurt themselves and end up in physical therapy themselves. Um, but in terms of getting the patient out of the wheelchair, depends on why they're in there in the first place. If it's a progressive muscular disease like um, MD or you know muscular scler right, multiple right, sclerosis, right. one of those, you know, we can try to minimize the progression, but we're not going to stop it. Do we make a mistake sometimes by thinking we can do it? Like, let's say it's not trauma. Let's say it's just like a sedentary job, like maybe a radio announcer. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's very sedentary. I went to New York, Lauren, and and you know, you know, walk in New York is a walking town, mm -hmm. and I grew up there, and I used to walk all the time. So I'm with my son, and he's fine. He's got the stride. He jogs every day. 
But Dad, <laughs> I had a hard time keeping up. Okay, I mean, I did pretty good. But I said to Robin when I came back, I don't know that I would be able to handle Disney World. I have to walk more often. So am I making a mistake by just taking it upon myself to walk a mile or two every day? Well, I mean, as always, anytime you want to, you start an exercise program, you should consult your medical professional. But it's not a mistake to try to increase your activity. Everyone should be active and as mobile as possible. And starting on a in a good regular exercise program certainly would help that. It would, uh, you know, if it were me, I would start and see if it if it helped uh, improve my situation. I mean, if the limitation that you experienced in New York was say. Um, because of cardiovascular, because you you just had a hard time keeping up, you're short-winded, you know, that can be improved through regular exercise. Mm -hmm. If you started having pain in your lower extremities because uh, you're walking a lot and you're not used to that, then obviously... I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, then a, so then, yeah, a sensible exercise program, it's always a good idea to consult a medical professional. And, and physical therapists, uh, you know, that's what we do. We analyze movement and we look and see where the, the weak link in, is in the movement. We try to uh, fix that through exercise. That's our modality of treatment. And, and then we uh, try to improve your function. So do you, are you able to measure success? I'm sorry. Are you able to measure success or is the measurement of success always by asking the patient, are you feeling better? I mean, is there actually a way to measure, like, I don't know, with a device or with ultrasound or something? Uh, sh well, there are ways. We do a comprehensive evaluation upon uh, someone coming into our, our area of, um, you know, whether it's an, long-term care or whether it's an outpatient we'll do an evaluation and we'll establish a baseline of where you're at mm -hmm. and then we'll establish goals w in conjunction with the therapy with the uh with the family member or the uh, the patient we want to decide hey where is it that you want to be and what do you want to accomplish and then we'll look at the baseline that, that you're at and say okay that's reasonable and, and these are the things that I think we can help you with. So it is measurable. There are objective measurements that you can do. We do not use ultrasound um, specifically in PT, more as a treatment modality rather than, than a um, diagnostic okay. modality. Um, but we do do objective measurements, strength testing, testing of the range of motion, um, functional mobility, what they can what you're capable of doing um, cardiovascularly, we can test that as well. Is uh, medication sometimes necessary throughout the physical therapy process? Um, it, it can be. Mm -hmm. It can be an adjunct. That is, uh, you know, we're, we, we call our, the medication we push is exercise. That's our drug of choice, oh, okay, obviously. Okay. So, so we, there's not a lot of medication that, that we um, uh, utilize in physical therapy, but in conjunction with our medical um, team peers, the, you know, our, our, the physicians, they can sometimes help us help someone get through a difficult time because there are times where the activity itself, just bending your knee is so painful mm -hmm. that, um, that it, you know, you can't progress right, as fast right, right. as you would like to or at all. And uh, many times w if you can get through that pain because really what we need to do typically in mo most of these cases is improve the motion, improve the movement. And if you can't do that because of a limiting factor such as pain, then, y mm -hmm. you know, that can be something, an adjunct to it. I think Tish is going through physical therapy, isn't she? Yeah. She just had a, well, did yep. she have a knee cap replaced or something? Or yeah. She's had some kind knee of knee surgery. Do you know, Lauren? I don't know what kind. What, what Tish has gone through? I'm, she, I'm not sure what she had done, but it, it was with her knees. So that somebody, somebody who has knee surgery in general would be going to you for, for the uh, physical therapy, right? They can go preoperatively and also postoperatively. Preoperatively, really? Sure, yeah, we call it prehab, something that we do to help educate the patient in advance of their surgery, especially with our total knee and total hip patients. Um, they'll, they'll be seen uh, establish those baselines of range of motion, strength, what they need to work on, and educate them as to what they can expect from the surgery, what exercises they will be doing after the surgery, and we even have them start some of the exercises prior to surgery wow. to help get them ready for the post-operative phase. Uh, Jeff, we have to take a break. Do I call you a doctor of physical therapy? Is that the appropriate title? 
Sure. Doctor of Physical Therapy. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, no. I am All a right, doctor. So of DPT, physical. I wasn't sure what it meant. DPT. It's all a right. doctor of physical therapy. We need, so. I need to learn all my initials better. Uh, Jeff Nasman, <laughs> doctor of physical therapy, will be here. By the way, if you have any questions, this is a great time to call. The number is 622-9622. Uh, Dr. Nasman, uh, Nasman is the guest of Lauren Debick, who's also here. We'll take a little break and be right back. Whether you're building it up or knocking it down, get it done, rent it now. Sunbelt Rentals is here to make your job a little easier. Our knowledgeable staff will help you find the right equipment for any job, big or small. Did you know that Sunbelt Rentals carries heaters, air conditioners, generators, lighting, traffic control, and so much more? So whether you're building it up or knocking it down, we've got the equipment you need. Get it done, rent it now. And right now, for a limited time, you can have it for less. Just by mentioning this ad, if you rent it Friday afternoon, you can keep it the whole weekend and only pay for one day. But this is a limited time offer, so stop into Sunbelt Rentals today, Northwest 27th, just a quarter mile east of I-75. For more information, just give us a call, 352-369-9101. 352-369-9101. Sunbelt Rentals. Get it done, rent it now. 352-369-9101. The very best in quality is Captain T's upholstery. Hey, this is Dan. Let me ask you a few questions. Does your boat look better with the cover on? Has your car's interior seen its better days? Stop using a towel to cover up those rips in the golf cart. Isn't it about time you had it restored to better than new with a custom upholstery from Captain T? Captain T's upholstery has been right here in Ocala for nearly 20 years, so they know how to make your ride one of a kind. Whether you want to take that classic ride back to a factory look or put your favorite sports team front and center, Captain T's upholstery is who to call. 352-369-1810. That's 352-369-1810. Or stop by their location. 5030 South Pine Avenue in Ocala, just past the drive-in. And of course, don't forget to visit them on the web, CaptainTUpholstery.com. The very best in quality is Captain T's Upholstery. Career Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent, and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9.30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion and learn how they can help you. All right, 18 minutes after 11 o'clock, Lauren Depic is here. She is, of course, with Ocala Health, and she brings us great guests. Today it is Dr. Jeff Nasman, a, de- a doctor of physical therapy. And can I tell you something real quick? I was just thinking of something that I didn't get a chance to tell you off the air. So I was in New York, and we did the Uber thing, right? And now, Lauren, you know I had this thing with my leg, right? Mm-hmm. With, with, okay. So the doctor who's working on my leg has told me that if you have hair on your legs, it means you have healthy circulation. And I said, well, I must not have healthy circulation. He says, exactly. You need to, so we're going <laughs> to fix this because I got smooth legs. Well, the lower part of my left leg is smooth. you got to wear so shorts next time. I'm t- so I'm see. telling my son in the backseat of this Uber car, you know, why my legs probably hurt from this, but I'm, but I'm having it taken care of. And I said, you know, my leg is bald on the left side. You know, so I had no hair on the left side. Of <laughs> so th- the driver's listening. His name is Muhammad. I say... <laughs> That was his name. I said, Muhammad, do you have hairy legs? And I thought my son was going to die laughing. <laughs> he just, and Muhammad said, what is that? I said, you have hairy legs. He said, well, I think I do. I said, you know, that means you're healthy. That means you have healthy legs. So, I mean, I, I know your ladies shave, so that doesn't count, but it's, there's still hair there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So anyway. Uh, if, if a person, when they're going to the hospital to have a, a procedure done, are they allowed to contact you or should they... Or should their doctor recommend you to them? Um, in the hospital, it's it's through the physician. Mm-hmm. So usually, because we don't provide outpatient services at Ocala Health, we do that in partnership with Strive. So Strive is the outpatient arm of Ocala Health. Uh, if you're admitted to the hospital for a procedure, then the physician... Um, your, or your physician will order physical, occupational, and speech mm-hmm. therapy for you as needed. So typically you don't do that preoperatively. Now, 
they do have pre-admit through the hospital and oh. they take care of all that they do a lot of the education some of the nurses are doing some of that education regarding um the the total knees and the total hips as mm. well but we've participated in that in developing those educational materials oh okay is there a different approach for a younger person who needs physical therapy than for somebody who's up in age is there a different approach to that well it, it might or a different expectation maybe for results and i mean ultimately if you're 90 you may never become 100 percent of what you were i don't mean to be pessimistic but that might be realistic yes? sure yeah. yeah i mean i think expectations are are set by the patients themselves and we try to help them um temper their expectations if, if they might be a little oh, really bit. see that would be me i would be over optimistic i would be in a wheelchair saying oh, i can run out i can run a mile <laughs> well <laughs> give me some therapy i'll be doing it and that, and, and that's a, a perfect example and we would say yeah, I believe maybe that you can get out of that wheelchair. Let's start with walking first yeah, and, yeah. and then take it step by step. You know, running might be the long-term goal. Uh, How about the reindeer run? The reindeer run on the Cali Christmas Parade? <laughs> I've always it's thought, one day I'm going to do this, this reindeer run. <laughs> what is it, four miles, three? What is a 5K? Is it a three and a half mile? 3.1. 3.1. 1. 3. <laughs> oh, you know? Do you do it? Mm -hmm. I've yeah. done them before. Y you do the 5K? I have not done that one yet. Maybe this year. Oh, you mean the, the reindeer one? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, I don't think it, it's still the same distance, right? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. There's 5Ks and 10Ks. Do you do it too? I do. Got to stay <laughs> active and healthy. Do you do marathons? I do not do marathons. We have a, a, a physical therapist in our... Uh, in our practice oh, that has gosh. run over 25 marathons. I can't. My, oh, I've my I've gosh. Been, I have a nephew who does those things. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Do you? No, I, I, st I stick to the five Ks. That's my marathon. <laughs> Are you doing too? So you actually benefit both of you from kind of preventive stuff. Absolutely. I mean that. You know, one of the reasons I went into physical therapy. My passion is exercise. I've always had a passion for that. I like sharing that knowledge with with my patients and with anyone that will listen. And um, you know, I, I like to live the lifestyle. I mean, the lifestyle of being an active person. You know, whether whether you like to skateboard or play uh, you know participate in athletics in in school or recreational you know athletics or just you know be a recreational weightlifter or, or a runner yeah um, those are the kinds of things uh, for me personally i like to lift weights and i like to run so those are the kinds of things i've, I've recently gotten into biking so i'm doing a little of a Mm -hmm. um, looking into a triathlon here. My inspiration. Oh, nice. Sure. <laughs> so when, when people are athletic like that, can they just come to you just so you can check them out to make sure that they haven't done any damage and can you just put them on a uh, physical therapy regiment? Absolutely. There are some limitations for, you know, if, if you want your insurance to cover it because typically um, if you want oh, insurance okay, to cover, right. you have to have a, a functional deficit that we're addressing actively. Mm -hmm. But we also are we're experts in, in exercise, in, in healthy living, and, and uh, so you certainly can access a physical therapist for um, exercise advice and mm -hmm. uh, that guy's doing his exercise out the window <laughs> <laughs> the few jumping jacks as he passed by good for him uh but but yeah certainly we we would be good to consult for an exercise program and uh, a lot of the stuff that i do pretty much um in my free time is help my friends and colleagues uh oh nice like oh that. really yeah. uh, is there any way to do the exercise of walking if if you have uh, I, I guess compromised joints like in your knees and your or your ankles, well we always say let your pain be your guide and usually you know there's a phrase um, that motion is lotion meaning as you move your joints like that. you're going to lubricate. I'm going to get that t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have a t-shirt coming. I'll make sure you. Does get it one. say motion is lotion? Motion is oh lotion. Oh my I'm gosh! I am getting that t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I had to fight for that one because uh, I bet you yeah. did. I bet you did. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but but it's but it's true. The more we move, they're probably upset. I'm saying it on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> the more we move, the more active we become. The better the better we move around. The key is um, is starting sensibly. You know, you can't automatically. If you've never run a 5K, you shouldn't go out and run a 5K. Okay, maybe oh. you can go out and, and. Do you know how far it is from here? To the Burger King under under the interstate, it's uh, one mile exactly. Yes. If you walk through the mall, if you walk around the mall, it's like one 
point two or something. So walk. So start walking through the mall, and then when that becomes easy, walk around the mall. Yeah, but we did. We walked to the Burger King, <laughs> had a Whopper, and then came back. <laughs> wow, <look out laughs> yeah. Me. Do you know what we we had a segment the other day on? How, there was a school in Texas. Okay, let me just tell you this the backstory, and they had on their menus and their in their their food areas how many calories everything was and the students weren't changing their behavior so then they put on the menus how far you have to walk in order to burn this off mm -hmm. one m and m was the length of a football field including the end zones you had to walk 120 yards for mm -hmm. one m and m i know i know i said oh my gosh no wonder i'm fat yeah <laughs> I, I sit here do nothing <laughs> That's always the challenge because when we go out and exercise, a lot of times many people feel, oh, I've exercised, I feel good, and uh, so I'm going to reward myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I, in college, I worked at a Mrs. Fields Cookies, and there was an aerobic studio down down the way. Oh, really? And as soon as the class got out with their aerobics, they, they were there was a little rush for uh, mm -hmm. cookies right after. The class. <laughs> but it, but okay, but we, we it's a hundred calories to walk one mile. That doesn't seem like much. So we walked two hundred calories and probably had six hundred or more calories in that Whopper. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and and that you know when we're talking about weight loss and fitness, you know, there's a lot of reasons to do exercise. Some of it's to lose weight. Sometimes it's to to better condition yourself for athletic performance. Sometimes it's just for the sake of health and maintaining your ability to to be mobile um but when you're talking about weight loss you know diet's probably about 70 to 75 percent of it and that's probably yeah. something we have to be honest with ourselves about i'm talking Absolutely. to me right now so so it, in other words physical therapy is going only going to go so far if i'm overweight absolutely okay yeah Wonder and that's what's wonderful about um, Ocala Health and Strive is that you have a complete program. You just don't address so good. the physical therapy issue. You keep talk on about track. nutrition and <laughs> exercise and even sleep is very important. Absolutely. Oh, I can do that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that one I'm good at. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, uh, insurance and the, one of the questions that was provided to me so make sure I ask it, is what payment options are there for physical therapy? Well, there's a lot of different options. Obviously, for a, you know, a fitness consultation that may not be covered by um, insurance, you can obviously uh, pay for cash for It'll that. It would be worth it, though. I mean, just yeah. to be oh, on the certainly. right track and know what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but insurance does cover um, a lot of the stuff that we do in physical therapy, but you have to have a, a functional uh, deficit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in order to... Um, meet the criteria for insurance so and it, it depends upon what kind of insurance you have and and uh you know whether there's co-pays etc but, yeah, yeah. but they're, they're, both options are available bicycling is that is that the form of physical therapy bicycling absolutely i just started doing a little biking and i really enjoy it mm -hmm. and when when the uh, operation is scheduled and then the surgeon goes in and does the operation how long do you wait till after the patient is after it is in the uh, hospital room before you begin physical therapy uh the goal is we get them up the same day oh my so they have surgery that day uh many times uh, we're in there that evening at least getting them up and walking maybe to the bathroom walking to a chair mm -hmm. um, we want them moving right away a uh, typical stay for a, a post-op orthopedic patient would be one to two days mm -hmm. so we don't have a lot of time but we've got to get them started on wow. some some very simple exercises and get them moving being able to transfer safely in and out of bed being able to walk to uh, mm -hmm. to the commode safely so yeah we start same day uh, if not the first thing in the morning and you had brought up a very important point earlier is that the caretaker for the patient needs to have some kind of physical therapy themselves if they do something wrong with the patient? Well, they need to be part of the process. They need to be involved and educated so that they can help their, their significant other, their, their loved one. Um, and part of it is motivating them, but part of it is keeping them safe too. We don't want them to be helping someone and hurt themselves right, right, in the right. process of helping their loved one. Mm -hmm. So the education piece is very important and key for them. I'm guessing you've seen a lot of success stories, and we don't have enough time to ask you to tell us a story, but thank you, Dr. Jeff Nasman, for coming in here and, and talking to us about this. And Lauren Debick, of course, uh, do we call you to get the ball rolling? You can call the health hotline, and that number is 1-800-530-1188. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank Thanks you. You've inspired us. me. Now I'm going to walk and 
Next time I go to New York, no Uber. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back.